This is actually quite a remarkable formula because it shows you that you can also construct the Hermit polynomials by doing some magic involving taking derivatives of exponential functions here. So pause the video and try and identify a strategy to show this result. Now we need to show that this formula is valid for all possible values of n. So one thing you could do is making use of mathematical induction. So first showing that the formula is valid for n equal to zero, and then showing that if you assume that it's valid for n, also show that it's valid for n plus one. And by combining these two pieces of information, uh, you can ladder your way from zero to one to two, all the way towards infinity. So what I suggest you do is pause the video, work out that this formula is indeed correct for n equal to zero. Then for fun, I would also do it for n equal to one, strictly speaking, not necessary for mathematical induction, but it does give you some sort of feeling for how this Rodriguez formula works. And then finally, assume that the formula is valid for n, and then also based on that, derive that you can take the step to n plus one. Okay, let's go ahead here. Let's verify that the formula is true for n equal to zero. So h is zero, is that equal to minus one to the power of zero exponential x squared, the zero order derivative, yet that's just not doing anything. So that evaluates to one. And this is indeed, as we know, the Hermit polynomial of order zero. So that works indeed. Let's see what happens for n equal to 1. So then we have minus 1 to the power of 1 exponential x squared, and then taking the derivative of exponential minus x squared. So that's going to be minus 2x exponential minus x squared. If we then combine all of those, then the minus sign uh, signs cancels out, the exponentials cancel out. So finally, this is equal to 2x. And again, we know that this is the Hermit polynomial of order 1. Okay, now for the meat and bones of this exercise, what happens for the Hermit polynomial of order n plus 1? Do we indeed have the situation that the following formula holds, where this is equal to minus 1 to the power of n plus 1 exponential x squared, and then the n plus 1 derivative of this exponential? Now, the trick here is that we're going to write this n plus 1 derivative as the derivative d dx of the nth derivative dn dx n. So why are we doing this? Because obviously, if we write it in this way here, then between square brackets, we do have something uh, for which we can use our assumption that the formula is valid for n. So in case this was the missing hint that you needed to make progress in this exercise, just pause the video again and have another go at this. Okay, what do we have between square brackets? Let's have a look at this formula. So now we assume that this formula holds for n equal to n. Then the stuff between square brackets is what we have up here. So we can just bring these other factors to the left-hand side. So this here, between square brackets, is equal to minus 1 to the power of minus n, which is again just minus 1 to the power of n. doesn't change anything. H n exponential, and then minus x squared. Okay, let's simplify this a little bit. Let's first take a look at the minus one. So we have minus one to the power of two n, which is just one, and then minus one to the power of one. So that's a minus sign. So we have minus exponential x squared, and then we need to take the derivative of the stuff between square brackets. So first of all, 
we have hn prime of x exponential minus x squared and then we have hn of x minus 2x exponential minus x squared let's cancel these exponentials the positive and the negative exponentials they just become one um, let's also start with the second term because that will allow us to start with the plus sign so that brings us to 2x h n of x and then minus h n prime of x now we're almost there the only thing we need to do is just make use of the recurrence relationships that we've shown in the past so we know for example that the second term here the derivative of the hermit polynomial of order n that we can write this as 2n the hermit polynomial of order n minus 1 and then what we have here another recurrence relation that we can apply telling us that this thing here basically is exactly a equal to the Hermit polynomial of order n plus 1 of x, which is what we set out to prove in the first place. So here we've shown that if the formula is valid for n, that the formula is also valid for n plus 1.